guys, Scare9 here, welcome back to my channel today, and we are here for episode 7 of 5 Things You Did Not Know About Destiny 2. I'm gonna start running out of stuff here soon, because that's a lot of freaking facts. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and center most of this episode around Season of the Dawn and Shadowkeep stuff. There's one out of these 5 facts that doesn't have to do with the last couple of months in Destiny, so if you're not caught up with Season of the Dawn, there are going to be some very light spoilers but they are here, so keep that in mind as we go forward. As always, I'm going to start with the stuff that most people probably know and end with some things that you have probably never seen in all of your hours playing Destiny. So let's just go ahead and get into it and make sure you let me know which of these things you did not know down in the comment section below. So the first thing is something that everyone in the community has been buzzing about, but just in case you haven't heard about it, I do want to go ahead and make sure I point it out here because it is an amazing little detail that Bungie added into the game. If you approach Saint-14 in the tower, his vendor spot, while wearing the helm of Saint-14, you will actually get a unique line of dialogue that shows that Saint actually recognizes that you are wearing a copy of his helmet, and you can hear that here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look like me. Let us confuse Zavala like this. So once again, just a really, really cool small detail. A lot of people are talking about it, so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you guys knew about this already, but it is something I wanted to point out because it is super, super interesting. And uh, yeah, for further information on this, I'm gonna link a Twitter thread down in the comment section below where the sound designer who actually implemented this into the game talks about the journey to get it added into the game. It's very interesting, so I will have that linked down below. Now, the second thing you did not know about Destiny has to do with the Vex Mind that was specifically built to take out Saint-14. This Vex Mind is called Agioxis Martyr Mind, which, if you translate from Greek to English, means Saint Martyr Mind. Meaning that the Vex, which we know, you know, there's a lot of points in the campaign where Saint-14 talks about how there's almost a mutual respect between him and the Vex. They are both just opposing forces, they respect each other a lot, but at the end of the day, they need to eliminate each other because Saint sees them as a huge threat and the Vex also see him as a huge threat. So they're just trying to kill each other, but there's a lot of respect between them. So the fact that the Vex built a mind specifically tuned to Saint-14's light to kill him and then proceeded to name that Vex mind directly after Saint-14 is a nice little nod to how much respect they really had for this character. Now, the third thing has to do with these Saint-14 weapons that you get from doing things like the sundials, the time lost bounties, and so on and so forth. These weapons look and sound absolutely incredible, but there's also one extra small detail that a lot of people haven't noticed yet, and I think it's really cool. It's kind of non-important at the end of the day, but it's a nice little detail that they threw in there. So all of these weapons somewhere on the gun will have the Roman numerals X14, which is of course 14, symbolizing, you know, Saint 14. And whenever you get close to any of the four obelisks, so any of the ones on Mars in the EDZ, on Nessus, or in the Tangled Shore, this 14 Roman numeral will actually start to glow. I'm not sure if this is going to have any importance later on. It would be cool if we have to use it as sort of like a treasure map or a treasure finder. I doubt it, but... It's such a cool little visual detail that I think is awesome that they threw into the game. So now we're at the fourth thing you did not know about Destiny 2, and this is where it starts to get pretty tough. This has to do with the Pit of Heresy, where you can see the final encounter arena from the first encounter and vice versa. So if you're on that Hive Castle in the first area where you have to, you know, break the seals by killing the respective enemies and then you have to proceed forward, if you look out into the Endless Chasm, you can actually see exactly where the Crystal and Falnok are. You can just look out into the void and you can see it plain as day as I show you in this clip here. Then if you make your way all the way through the Pit of Heresy and you're there in the final arena and you look up on the cliffside, there you go. There is the giant fortress that you had to kind of make your way through while killing different enemies. Not really an important detail, but it's very cool. I love how Bungie does this world building. They did something very similar with the Shattered Throne where you could see the final tower whenever you load it in. It gives you a sense of progression and it shows you exactly where you are going and kind of almost gives you an objective without directly telling you exactly where you are going 
It's an amazing way to tell a story. It works really well. And honestly, I think it's a detail not enough people know about. And then finally, we have something that I had no idea about. I have a lot of time in Destiny 2, like too much time in Destiny 2. And I had never seen this. There are a couple of points throughout the game where there are interactable environments where you can like shoot a wall and rocks will take damage and fall off. Now, I was able to find two of these spots via a thread on Reddit, which I will link, but I'm sure there are a couple other spots like this in the game. I'm not really sure why they're here. They don't do damage to players. They don't really interact with the environment at all, but there are two places I know of where if you shoot rocks, they will fall. The first is going to be in the flooded chasm lost sector in the EDZ. If you make your way all the way to where the lost sector chest is, there's a little mini kind of rock face there, there are going to be rocks that take damage and they fall, and it does, it's a destructible environment. The second place is going to be in a much more common place that you've probably been. It is going to be a doorway between the A and C flags on the Fortress Crucible map. Right on the top left hand corner of the doorway, as you see here, there are rocks that when you shoot them, they will take damage and fall off the wall. Which is really weird, because like I said, they don't damage players, as I demonstrate in this clip, they don't seem to have any purpose. But for some reason, the designers took the time to kind of code these rocks to take damage and fall and added physics to them, but they don't seem to have any purpose in the game. And I can't think of any time in the entirety of Destiny 2 where this would have mattered. So it's very interesting. Maybe it was a cut feature of the vanilla version of the game and they just left some instances of it in or something like that. I'm not really sure, but I'm willing to bet most of you guys did not know that these were in the game. So those are five more things you guys did not know about Destiny 2. Once again, let me know which of these five you did or did not know down in the comment section below. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like rating and to share it with your friends. If you were interested in watching either of the two videos on screen, you can click their respective annotations to be taken to them. If you were brand new to my channel, make sure the giant version of my logo on screen to be subscribed to more awesome Destiny 2 videos and live streams. Thank you guys so much for watching today, and I'll see you in my next video.